In this one, we're going to be setting up your Django static files in production using Linode's object storage. It's incredibly easy to do, so let's go ahead and jump in. Now, first and foremost, I have this blog post right here that's going to actually cover everything we're going to do in this one, but it will be the most up-to-date source for all this stuff. Next, you can actually grab a free $100 credit to Linode. And thanks to them for doing this, they didn't actually sponsor this video or anything. They just hooked us up with this $100 credit. So definitely go there on linode.com slash CFE. And I'll have that link in the description as well. And now after you sign up, you'll be in the Linode console, which is on cloud.linode.com. We're going to actually come back to this in just a moment. But for now, what we want to do is actually set up our Django project. Now, I already have this set up. So if you've never done this before, this is probably not the best video for you. But these were the steps that I took. First off, I created a virtual environment. I activated that. You absolutely can use pip -EMV or any other virtual environment manager there. Then I installed Django, Django Storages, Boto and Boto 3. This is a big red flag for some of you. Um, and then the next thing is Django Admin, Start Project, CFE Home, period, right? So inside of this project here, this is where I started it. Now, of course, I'm using VS Code, but you can use any text editor as well. Now, the reason Boto and Boto 3 are a big flag, red flag for you is probably because you might be familiar with using those on AWS. So that's what they're actually managed by. They are managed by AWS. But the way that object storage works is almost identical to AWS's S3. That's Amazon Web Services S3. But Linode's object storage is significantly less expensive overall. Uh, especially if you start moving a lot of data around. But since we have that free $100 credit, it's going to be really inexpensive for us for a long time for the vast majority of our Django projects. So with that out of the way, um, hopefully you now have all of that set up. And what I want to do then is actually run Python manage.py migrate. Just want to make sure that that's all done as well. Next thing is just simply pip freeze and requirements.txt. And then with this, I see that I've got a number of things that are related to this project. Of course, my main projects configuration, settings.py and manage.py. Those are the main things that we want to look at here. Now, when it comes to the version of Django, this actually should work on Django 1.8. As long as Django storage is that package that we'll talk about in a second is available, then it will work on that version of Django, which I think is really cool. So this is probably not going to change for quite a long time. And I don't think it's going to change much on Linode's side either. Okay, so the next thing is we actually want to take a look at Django Storages. So Django Storages is a package that makes it really easy to convert our static file hosting service from Django's built-in stuff to one of these cloud providers. And the cloud provider we are going to be emulating here is AWS's S3 or Amazon S3. So that's what we're going to be using from here on out, which is actually not that hard to do. You really just need to know what to look for. So let's go ahead and open up settings.py. Now, typically speaking, I would actually put this configuration in another module or another Python module, but I'm going to keep things simple and just leave it into settings.py. Um, so what I want to do is actually scroll to the very bottom of this settings.py in here. So right underneath static URL, these are where I'm going to be doing the configuration. Now, the first thing is actually overriding the default file storage and static file storage. So what this is going to do eventually is actually take over for file fields and file uploads. So that's actually really cool. And then also all of our other static file storage as well. So it's doing the media uploads as well as our static files, which is great. That's going to make things really a lot easier for us. OK, so the next thing is I actually want to add in a few arguments in here that are related specifically to Linode. So let me just close this down. So we're going to do the bucket. Then we're going to do the bucket region. And then we are going to go ahead and do the access key and then the secret key. OK, so I definitely need to fill these things in and we'll do that in a moment. Um, and then I am now going to actually set up things that are related to Django storages. So that's what this stuff is as well. Uh, but these are AWS S3 specific things. So let's go ahead and look at this and do AWS S3 and endpoint URL. OK, so this is how we actually override our endpoint URL to our Linode bucket. But how do we actually go about doing that? That's something I'll show you in just a moment. 
Next is our AWS access key ID. Now this is actually gonna be equal to our Linode bucket access key. Now I have actually found that these are a lot more simple to set up than the AWS IAM related permissions and all that for specific buckets. Uh, so it actually would be nice if AWS would learn from Linode in this case, because S3 is a very common thing that you'll use. You don't necessarily use all of the things that are on AWS. But anyways, I digress. Linode is um, really cool in this case. So let's go ahead and do AWS secret access key. And this time we're going to be using the Linode bucket secret key. Of course, still need to set these things, but I just want to show you how similar all of this is. So I'm going to do AWS S3 and region name. And of course, this is going to be equal to the Linode bucket region that we will set shortly. AWS S3 use SSL. We are going to go ahead and say that's true. And then finally, the AWS storage and bucket name is equal to the Linode bucket. Okay, cool. So that's pretty much the baseline configuration for this. We shouldn't have to do a whole lot more than this other than filling in some of the things that are specific to our account. Now, I will say the reason that this all exists is because Linode's object storage is S3 capable. So it allows us to do all sorts of really advanced things that you might do on S3 that you also can do in Linode, but it's a lot less expensive. Okay, so here we go. Now let's go ahead and actually set all of this stuff up. Before I do that, I will say that typically speaking, you're gonna to wanna to put these things into your environment variables. I'm actually not gonna be putting them in there, uh, but that is what you'll wanna do in the long run, especially when you go into production. But since I'm actually not going into production here, I'm just gonna be using it locally. I'm gonna set it up just like this, but overall in the long run, that's how you're gonna do it. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and actually create our first bucket. So jumping in to your Linode dashboard, uh, you're gonna wanna go down to object storage. Now you might have to actually activate this for this to work, which is fine. Just go ahead and activate it and now create your new bucket. So a couple things to note in here, uh, you'll see a, a number of items that are related to my actual buckets themselves that we can probably already start filling things in based off of these old ones. But I wanna go ahead and create a new one. So inside of create, we're gonna go, or rather inside of add bucket, we're gonna go ahead and add bucket and we'll do CFE three and then select the region you wanna use. Typically speaking with these kinds of regions, we'll probably see a lot more over time pop up here. Uh, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is pick a region that's really close to where the bulk of your users are. Um, so that's kind of a standard practice here because it's not really a content delivery network as in this is not going to go to the edge around the world. It's just going to be mostly uh, centered in this location. And since I'm in California, New York is actually the closest one to me or New Jersey here. So I'm going to go ahead and create that one. And as you notice, it actually follows, uh, well, some of my other examples that I've been testing out. So a couple things to note already is I can now set my bucket. So in this case, it's CFE3. That's my bucket name. Cool, simple enough. Region is this region right here. So US-East-1. And like I said, I would imagine that Linode's gonna start adding a lot more of these things as more people start to use it. Um, so let's go ahead and add this in here as US-East-1. Now, if you're coming from AWS S3, you'll notice this is almost identical to how all of that works. So now we can actually put in the AWS S3 uh, endpoint URL as well. And to do this, we just are gonna go ahead and put an F string here for that substitution. And I'll use the bucket region and then dot linodeobjects.com. Now, for some reason, if this endpoint actually changes, I'll definitely update that blog post. So be sure to check that out. So the next thing is, all we have to do really is add in some access keys here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create some access keys and I'll just call this CFE Linode key and I want to limit access in this case. So I actually think it's a really good idea whenever you're creating keys of any kind is to limit the access as to how you're gonna get those keys. So when you're working locally, you might actually put it onto a read only. You might, you might actually make a key that's specifically for your local development just to actually be able to still get that static files and all that. 
But in my case, I actually want read and write. So I'm only going to be doing it on that recent bucket that I created here. And I hit submit. Uh, this also actually, you know, adds some security for us in the sense that if we let all of our buckets be in access, that might be a lot of data that we just don't want to get out there in case you accidentally lose some of these access keys. Okay, so with this, I've got my access key here. And I'm going to go ahead and put this here. And then my secret key here. And put that right in here as well. Okay, so again, definitely want to move this into environment variables when you go into production. It's going to be a lot easier to rotate those keys and a lot more secure, especially if you're going to be pushing this to like GitHub or any sort of Git repository. You want to hide those keys as much as possible. I have to reiterate that over and over again just to make sure that you guys know that this isn't fully ready to go into production. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear this out. And now I'm going to run Python manage.py collect static and no input. Do note that I did save everything inside of settings.py and I believe I've got all these things right, but even if they're not, you could always copy and paste virtually this exact same thing on that blog post. So what it looks like on the blog post is this right here, right? So it actually does have those environment variables on there and you would just need to change some of the default values here. Uh, so no big deal if you actually wanted to go based off of copy and paste. Uh, that's probably what I would have done, but I just wanted to show you step by step everything that's going on. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and collect this static here. Hit enter. And this might take a minute because it's actually connecting to Linode. It's going into one of our buckets. And if we click on here, uh, we get this access denied. This is a very similar kind of access key or denied error that you might see on uh, S3 as well. So it's like very much like S3. So going into CFE right here, we see a new object in here. Now, typically speaking, when you're working with Django, that's what happens is it's just the admin, just as a baseline thing, right? So you've got the baseline admin static file. So JavaScript and CSS to actually run that Django admin. Um, and it's still taking a little bit of time here. Now, the reason I did no input is because I don't need to say that I'm definitely going to override all the things that are already in there. So I'm gonna let that finish for just a minute. And there we go. We have 132 fi static files copied into our static file server. The next time we do this, it shouldn't take nearly as long because it's not actually gonna copy all of those things, or at least it shouldn't copy all those things. But again, I'm actually in California, so I'm literally on the other side of the country to actually run this collect static. So it might take a little bit of, of time to actually get there. Uh, but with that, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new terminal here, and I'm just gonna activate it. So source bin slash activate. And that did take a lot less time over here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and run the server. So I, I was gonna do that on this new terminal, but I'll go ahead and run the server here. I'm gonna open this up. And of course, I haven't done anything in this Django project, but if I look in the admin and inspect or view the page source, either one, um, I just wanna see where my static files are coming from and what do you know? So it's actually coming from my CFE three bucket with that base file and then all of the AWS type keys that you might be familiar with. Notice that it says AWS access key ID literally the aws access key right so it's not, it's i mean it's a it's almost a, a replica of it but anyways when i go there there it is it's using ssl and it actually has secured keys and all this the other thing is that's important to note that gets to a little bit more advanced stuff is these keys right so in a lot of projects you might want to just have these open and a public read only thing so if you want to see how the, all of that's all set up, please let me know in the comments. But that's pretty much it. That's all we need to do to get our static files up and ready for production. Uh, there is only the one step of actually putting things into your environment variables. That's pretty much the only thing you'll need to do. But that's, of course, when you actually push this in production on any host whatsoever. So let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.